Hello, and I would like to welcome you all to our online um, Las Crona Photo Festival program. I'm joined by Sui Fong and Li Kai Chung, who are two artists which are part of a chapter, one of the chapters of the festival titled uh, Fluid Identities. This chapter is one of the fifth chapters answering to the overall theme of the architecture of memory. The festival theme encourages reflection on topics related to the structural mechanisms supporting the construction of the collective memory. In the particular uh, group exhibition, Fluid Identities, six artist uh, works embark on an exploration of identity in a Polish colonial landscape. These artists draw from personal experience using testimonies and anecdotes as a starting point of a journey of discovery. These works navigate the space in between the private experience and the overarching historical discourse. Reflecting on the notion of historical perspectives, stories are lived through many actors in different historical moments. Interlinked to create one same experience, these artists use tools of investigative research and empirical documentation, but the stories allow themselves a kind of freer uh, artistic form and interpretation. So thank you both for joining me to this discussion about your works. And I really wanted to start uh, with uh, Li Kai Chung and your project, The Retrieval, Restoration and Predicament. And if you wanted to kind of set it as um, in the journey of how you produce and what is the background to the creation of this work? Um, the project is entitled um retrieval, restoration, and predicaments. Actually, um, I, I, I started this, this project ever since 2018, where um, by the time I acquired an award from WMA Commission. So I, I started commission work ever since um, two years ago. And I finished this year, and the background of the, the project is about the um, during the Second World War, Hong Kong was occupied by the Imperial Japanese Army. So, um, and in the center of Hong Kong, there was um, a statue square uh, where 11 statues, um, which are consist of um, royal family of the British. And they were, uh, the statues were con uh, confiscated, uh, confiscated by the Japanese Army and took it back to Japan, um, home island. And the Japanese army, um, the reason why the Japanese army want to capture those statues, because by the time when the Japanese started the Pacific War in 1941, um, the, the resources that uh, actually they consumed in the war, especially metals, um, are highly depleted. So that's why Japanese want to recruit as much of resources as they can in the colonies and also their home island. And they call this movement uh, as uh, contributing metal or contributing bronze movement or, or campaign. After the war, when um, Japan, uh, the Japan home island, Jap uh, Japan was captured by the Allied, uh, Allied power, especially um, the American, um, um, uh, four statues were found by the army, American army. And American Army in, immediately in, informed the UK. And um, that's why four, uh, four of those 11 uh, statues were, were saved and transported back to Hong Kong. And I think the, the project centers in how we perceive our own identity as Hong Kong people. Ever since the war period, uh, colonial period, and also the post-colonial period ever, uh, since 1997, when Hong Kong was handovered back to China until now. And particularly among those four remaining statues, I paid more attention to one of those, uh, Queen Victoria statue. 
which was uh, which is still installed in um, in uh, Victoria Park uh, in Causeway Bay in Hong Kong, and the park um, carry all uh, very important um, symbolic uh, symbolic significance in the heart of Hong Kong people because every year we will command a uh, commemorate um, June Fourth massacre in Victoria Park, uh, but not this year because Hong Kong. Uh, we were banned to um, stay in public uh, public space uh, more than four people just because of the pandemics. So um, June 4th massacre um, memorial um, gathering day was stopped this year. So um, in the exhibition, I, I think my project is consists of three parts. Um, the first part is the sculptures. Uh, those uh, in this exhibition, you can see like there, they they are all kinds of like fragments from the body of the Queen Victoria, which are um, being cut off or melted by the Japanese army during the war. And the reason why I really want to pay attention to those parts, because um, they uh, when the Queen Victoria statue war uh, was transported back to Hong Kong in 1946, Hong Kong government wants to restore those parts, but due to um, limited resources, like social resources, because um, uh, a lot of savings in the bank and also um, uh, money and also currency and also jewelry uh, variables was kept, uh, was like captured by the Japanese during the war. So the Hong Kong government was lack of uh, social resources to restore uh, those parts. And, and that's why like, those, lo um, those lost parts during the war after the war, they were restored, but not in the original status. And through investigating and researching how those parts they restored, and I I I took in the research method that uh, look into archival materials and also um, publications by other scholars. And and at the end, I look into um, the archival uh, records in National Archives in UK. So uh, and. That's why I, I restored those parts. Like I, I use the word restored because when I try to did um, I try to do a 3D scan with the Victoria um, Queen Victoria statue, the government kind of um, restrict me from approaching the statue because they th they think when artists try to do something with the, with the statue, they um, they're afraid I will damage the statue, just like. A Chinese performing artist um, damaged the Queen's nose um, in 1996, uh, 1996. His name is Pan, Pan Xinglu. So um, uh, the statue part is all about how we reconstruct our, uh, the statue and also a metaphor of our own identity uh, since, the, uh, since the colonial period. And the second part is about a lens. In the exhibition, I I installed a picture of a lens stamped with made in occupied Japan. I, I filmed and took picture of the statue and also my, my moving images with the lens um, because after uh, the end of the war, American captured uh, occupied uh, Japan and they asked Japanese, army, uh, Japanese government um, to stamp made in occupied Japan to um, to mock them on on one hand, on the other on the other hand to restrict it, Japanese to export luxury goods in order to in uh, increase their wealth after the war. So um, I think the lens is more than just a tool, or just a lens to capture images, but also um, a perspective from uh, the perspective of a colonist to look back to the colon uh, colonized. So um, for me, um, the third part is the film that is a three channel film. The three channel film actually uh, is consists of three perspectives from three different persons. And um, they narrate about the geographical and historical background of Hong Kong during the occupation period. And also um, they came across to each other and um, they exchange what they think about uh, Think about occupation periods from um, from their own perspective because the three uh, characters they are from different 
um, countries. So um, I think for me, this whole, um, th this whole project is, um, I really want to um, examine how we see memory or history from, no matter it's from archival materials or publication or from what is happening right now. Every time when I in, um, start a historical project, I, I really want to overlay and uh, overlap the project with what is happening at the moment. So I still remember last year when I um, exhibited this project first time in Hong Kong, it was uh, three months after the outbreak of um, the social movement in Hong Kong. So um, for me, uh, my, my conversation with the audience and also my coworker uh, is all about um, what colonial period gave us and how we inherit from all those years and what we can do at this moment in Hong Kong. And uh, this is pretty much what uh, my project is about. And if Monica, we, we can have like further discussion about my project. Thank you very much. Um, Stan wanted to introduce um, Jin Sui Fong's uh, work now, the man who attends uh, to the time. And the interest in different sort of a part of the geography in a way of Hong Kong. There is a, a, a link between Chong's work, in a way he has referred to this statue at the heart of the city, but you also begin with this geographical uh, situation journey in your work. So now it would be great to be able to hear how your process is and what is the intention of the work and what is the ideas behind your concept. Mm. Uh, this work is called The Man Who Attends to the Times. It is about uh, the place which is uh, called the, um, uh, 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 it's now the oil street art space. It is formerly is a, a government storage called a government supply department. Why I started this project is because um, my work always uh, start with some of my doubt and some um, anxiety that uh, I want to answer come from my situations. So one of the uh, reasons is because uh, it's about identity, uh, because um, uh, as my father and mother's story, I didn't know much and they didn't talk much. So I was just thinking, uh, can I, by studying their history to uh, view, uh, as a viewpoint to also uh, look at what happened in Hong Kong. So uh, that is the beginning and starting point of the project. And that's why, um, and also uh, on the other hand is the building itself. Uh, as you just said, it's a heritage building. It's, a, it's over a hundred years um, uh, before it's a yacht club of the, uh, by the British of officer uh, and then become the uh, government supply department and then uh, it now is the is the oil street art space so um but when it is a government storage um it is uh, when uh, when uh, uh, this is um, a dormitory for the staff but uh, more than decades there's not much there's no official documentation or uh, any record of what the life was there uh, in this heritage building so I was just wondering, and my, and my father was working there for 29 years as a watchman, a caretaker of a storage. So I was really thinking about um, how important is a person work, uh, worth to have a chronicle of his own? Or how about uh, is there uh, anyone to record a history of a storage, of a government storage? Um, it, is, it is by uh, to study what he kept or it should be by what uh, what is the stuff he had, de uh, the, the stories have destroyed. So I was starting from this kind of question and then want to uh, uh, challenge how the construction of a history can be. Can I, uh, can anyone, everybody like uh, the layman, anyone can contribute to the field point to study a, history, a piece of history. And uh, also I was wondering, um, uh, if I if I start to collect all these fragments, uh, what how how can I as a uh, uh, as a person, a contemporary person now, how can I react to this piece of uh, uh, history? Uh, how can I as learn or to anything I want to pass on 
So uh, that's why uh, this project is, uh, this book project has two parts. The first part is uh, the investigation of uh, how my, how I uh, collect all these uh, small story by in, uh, interviews with the uh, colleagues, the former colleagues were there. And then, uh, and then I begin from the arrow sign. Uh, this sign uh, is, the, uh, is the sign to represent the government properties and it is stamped on all the uh, government goods. So I was wondering why is this sign and why, uh, uh, what's the history about this building? So the first part is about this kind of uh, investigations and also uh, the, uh, the research of my father's history. And then in, during this research, I was uh, uh, I realized my father have a very funny habit uh, that my, my uh, his co, co colleague uh, have said is he would like to take a long time be, uh, to walk from home to go to work. So I was thinking, uh, what this person would be when you are walking on the street. Uh, it is between the, your, you are like a father in a home and then to the work you are staff. But this long journey, who are you? I mean, uh, what is your, um, uh, sit, uh, your, your, um, uh, your, your being, being this long journey? What, what are you, you're feeling the street and you are, so I was uh, thinking this, this kind of romantic journey. And then I was uh, thinking uh, uh, his job is uh, always, taking care of something, looking something, or, or checking about time. And then what is the idea of time for, uh, for this job? So, um, so I was take, uh, I, uh, in the second half of the book, I want to take the, uh, take the role as the timekeeper myself and follow the same route. And then looking for the persons who appear again, uh, again and again, it's like a very, uh, it's also a disciplinary persons. And they actually represent the uh, time like a clock of the street. They are actually also represent the landscape of Hong Kong. And uh, they constitute what, how the people make use of the public space. So I would like to, uh, 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 to uh, that's why I make 29 unique books, just like the length of my father's job. And then uh, each year I will update this second half of the book and want to, uh, as a timekeeper, to, to feel what is, uh, uh, this job can be realized. And also uh, to, uh, as a way to capture the landscape of Hong Kong and uh, capture it as uh, the transformation of, uh, of the street, of the, of the public space. And also I take this kind, uh, this is not only book and a journey, but this is also an album to, uh, to put the present, uh, the past history and the future history together. And this album is also like a, a monument. The installation is like a monument. Um, and they, this, uh, because this is also like a ritual that you pay visits uh, every time to memorize a person or to, to just make it not forgetting. So it's, um, so, um, and also I'm questioning about uh, how uh, uh, I was investigating a person is that I have a subject, but then I'm also one of the subject in to making this history or, um, so I was, well, I want to uh, pull this action to realize how uh, to demonstrate how a history is constructed and, and how can we be the someone to also edit and contribute. So thank you very much both for this uh, very clear introduction to your work, your methodology, your way of working and uh, the concept behind both of the works. Um, for me, it's in, it's, it's really interesting that uh, both of you touch on the idea of history unfolding in a way and um, and how uh, you are researching and diving into you, uh, Sui Fong is a personal history and, you know, uh, Chang, you're looking into kind of um, 20th century sort of global events, but both of you are very much drawn to the present. It's trying to understand sort of unfolding events now and trying to understand how history is currently kind of uh, shaping itself almost in real time. That is a contradiction in terms. I'm very interested, uh, Chunk, if you could maybe sort of touch 
uh, on this kind of paralleled idea of you you know you referred about uh, colonialist and the colonialized and um we are seeing in recent sort of current events in in the uk in a way you know uh, the idea of the statues and the symbolism you know sort of uh, of the statues that they are in the main sort of squares in parliament square and in bristol and in a way, which sort of reflections do you have about your kind of your work? And in a way, this is a Great Britain who were the colonialist at the time of the beginning of the project with the statue. So it's just sort of a personal sort of reflection of this kind of a parallel sort of events that they are unfolding in real time. Chung, can you hear me? I think we have lost uh, Chung for a minute and the, the connection is a little bit challenging, but um, I'm going to uh, take, um, pick up on to what uh, Sui Fong was also referring to about the whole idea of unfolding history and how a project which um, it has a longevity, uh, your project is starting, started two years ago and, and every year it will add a, a chapter, a chapter of that year, all the way to 1946, and and in a way, this the year project have these two aspects of it, and I was interested to to understand, you know, um, again from your own perspective, this idea of unfolding history, history happening in 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 real time. You you think of the past, you are creating in the present, but your project is looking really beyond in, in, into the, the future and and how are the challenges of, of, of trying to, to create history in the present? Um, because now I think uh, why I make this tedious job to make this book I think it's also my resistance for the very fast um, mediated world now because we are uh, we use either uh, the social media every day we check the news not from tv maybe from social media uh, media and uh, things happening around us really really fast uh, so i was thinking so i was why, why i was uh, interested in uh, the book is called the man who attends to the time is i want to rethink about um uh, if we want to revisit history or if I want to relate to my contemporary time, and uh, what is the thing I want? I can keep doing it again, and to be disciplined persons, not just quickly or oh, move on, move on. But uh, what is something I want to keep and uh, want to find out? Um, so, I think the challenge is: Can I be slower? Can I uh, can I stop when I walk? Not just walking, but I take the walking as a journey to observe, to feel the history, the, uh, to feel the environment, the society, and then to be uh, observe, uh, observing persons. Uh, so the first thing I think the challenge is to the, the, the speed, slow down, and also um, um, because it is about um, stuff for my father, but also is, is uh, I'm also asking myself is, um, can I do something long the time? What what will be different? I mean, if I need to keep doing something, I can really uh, really take this chance to ask myself, uh, what is the essence or the uh, when I talking about history, uh, how can I not just immediate history that we are uh, experiencing now, everything is in instant. Uh, can I be the disciplined person to just uh, be a person to contribute to our angle of the to feeling the history uh, uh, from this daily practice so um so the book every year the edited way is also represent uh, how i use uh, visual or photography the angle to um uh, to to record this period of time of that year um for example in the editions of the 2018 it's about to to patient to meet the to to wait and observe around you and then wait the persons to appear again 
again. And then uh, you know, oh, this, uh, uh, this is the, uh, you, you, when you meet him again, you're very happy that, uh, wow, I really wait for him or, uh, oh, uh, uh, they really have a pattern on the street. So on the, for the edition of 2019, um, because um, the movement start, and also I was, and many of the time I was pregnant, so I cannot walk or be the movement demonstrate a lot. So what, what is my pictures more like is more from the, uh, uh, the live stream of uh, uh, what's happening on the street. And this is also how I see the world most of the time when, when, when there's lots of tear gas on the street and uh, lots of threat on the outside. Uh, so, it, so the book also capturing how it, uh, how my uh, I use photography uh, as a viewpoint. Yes, because uh, obviously what has happened in Hong Kong in, in in the last two years that is kind of the length of your project is been um, the visualizations on the street is quite dramatic. So this is a project that uh, intends. Uh, a, a quiet, like you were saying, a quiet observation. So we look at the pictures and we see our characters, our small interactions into the space, our small uh, presence into the overall sort of uh, run, uh, landscape of uh, Hong Kong. But of course we have got uh, 2019 and these are these protests in the streets, we have seen the, the police presence, the 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 taking over of the streets by by the protest in a way so so it is uh, uh, quite dramatic due to the events unfolding that the the book captures that kind of reality of the time so in a way the quietness gets swallowed by the 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 immensity of the of the events then we go into 2020 uh, in which we have completely the opposite. 2020 has not finished, but I understand in that this year there is no presence in the street because they've been locked down. So basically the first two chapters of your book uh, start with a kind of journey of quiet observance, but the quiet observance has become this kind of extreme reality that is yeah, yeah. unfolding before your eyes. So we're starting with um, these very dramatic events that they are being recorded. So and, and we don't know what it is to happen, but suddenly it's like we are feeling this kind of history in real time. And I revisit your work quite often at the installations. And, and, and for me, it's just to think uh, how, how stream, the extremity of, of what is happening and how your work, which have maybe a different intention, well, your work has the intention of, of capturing, but the reality of what is happening is quite, quite extreme. Um, I'm interested in, also, you know, you as an artist, uh, we talk about photography and of course you use the medium of photography, but you have this um, really a sculptural aspect to your work, both you and, and Chung. We're thinking of photography, photography as a medium is, is, is like where you start. But uh, I, ha I have seen your wider work, not just this, uh, the months that um, attends to the time. And you always sort of have that 3D element. Is these books are in sculptural pieces into the space? Yeah. It's not just the photography, it's not just the video. Why is this kind of need of, you know, yes, this kind of visualization, this 3D, this is cultural visualization of work? Uh, because this work also make me rethink about uh, time and also rethink about ritual because, um, if I take this, uh, this book as the, to study about my parents uh, and my father, and then um, how can I, I mean, um, in, this is the way to memorize him, but, um, but what is really about memory? I mean, uh, what is the meaning of ritual? It's more about you have to, um, uh, keep uh, uh, doing something regularly or to uh, to just make yourself uh, not to forget Th this is the practice about this so I was thinking uh, uh, this book is 29 unique copy it's not mass produced because it is um, more about uh, uh, it's more about uh, as, as this person this 
because it's a handmade, um, uh, the second half is the sticker, so I can edit it. So you are not only seeing the, uh, 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 the, the visual, but also seeing the traces, how I edit it and to, um, uh, com uh, to arrange the space between the pictures and among the book and also the texture of the book. And so I will see them as, uh, I would like to set them as a very monument, mon mon monument on the wall. It is, um, and this is, and also to, um, this setting is allowed, it is encourage you to read this kind of um, uh, history, the past and also the, uh, the representation of now at the intimate form uh, between you and this book. Uh, so, um, so I was setting uh, like this spatial is more uh, also to and uh, asking the visitors um, to to think that it is not just an image; it is a rep representation of an actions of searching and a journey of um, a ritual journey, and also it is a monument about memories. So it have to have a, a 3D or spatial uh, considerations to, um, to frame these ideas, yeah, to give the space for visitors to, to, to feel too. I mean, I'm afraid I think we have lost uh, Kai Chang for a minute in our connection uh, is a little bit disrupted, but I wanted, um, hopefully we will add uh, later some uh, answers to, uh, to the questions that uh, we had uh, planned and we were uh, considering. But following a little bit more with, uh, with you, Sui Fong, um, in, terms of the, um, in terms of the work, um, what are the challenges to kind of set you know, to, to think in terms of a set time going into the future. Uh, the idea is that, well, the challenges of having a, a body of work that you kind of sets time in a very a specific time into the future. We always do think of, you know, we produce a body of work and a body of work with maybe no a clear time of ending, but you have set yourself these really defined boundaries, defined define boundaries into the future in terms of annually all the way to 1946 in a location that is a location in Hong Kong which follows one very clear sort of journey in one very clear specific uh, time and and I just want to know how as an artist you feel by having this very uh, strict you know boundaries oh. into the future another thing is that to produce in real time but you know to this idea said well uh, how oh, do you feel? Uh, um, I think because I think when I just make one book uh, in one year, it doesn't really capture about. Uh, I I doesn't really find enough. I feel it's not complete. If only one book, I feel how oh, it's missing something, and then I feel um, that uh, I I have to I have a longer time to observe what I uh, what is really about. Yes, but you could have kept it open. You could have said, okay, I'm going to go into the future and I'm going to continue, which is, but you gave yourself already a very kind of ending date. And also it's, it's a date which is very kind of relevant uh, in terms of what it means 1946 for Hong Kong um, as a country, right? Yeah, uh, because I want to give myself a goal. And so I, pick, I want to pick a long year. So I think because I was taking the role of time uh, the man who attends to the time, right? Yes. So I was saying, okay, how long my father's work? Uh, then I pick up that year, it's 29 years. And then because I, I started this project in 2018, so I add 29, oh, and then it come out to be 2049. I think, wow, such a coincidence, but it's make, it seems make, I mean, it is meaningful also that because it's also representing a transformation. So I take this coincidence as a good point to also uh, make sure, ensure me to finish it, <laughs> to encourage me to have a goal. <laughs> to and also to, uh, yeah, to, also I will take it to be relaxed and then to keep it as a practice. Um, 
be, because uh, I, it is really a challenge for myself uh, uh, because uh, I'm easily to get interested in something suddenly, but how can I, can I do it long? This is always my question. Uh, but yeah, I will try to do it. And also I'm thinking uh, maybe uh, my, uh, my follower or my friend can also take up, uh, take up a year to, to, to do this man. That I'm, all, I'm open up for who is the man uh, uh, for this book uh, over these 29 years. If I'm sick, can my, my maybe my friend, my family can continue. Mm. So that's a certain kind of openness to, to, to frame this form, but also a way to open it up. For other practitioners to come in, you mean? Yes, yes. So that's a that's a subject I study. It's my father. Yes. And then I become the subject who walk through the journey and be the one to uh, to create a history. And then I also invite another. That's a possibility. Yes. I invite the uh, uh, the reader who also become the protagonist, one yes. of the characters. So it is also a way to reflect how we construct history or, yeah. So you're, then, this, this, this is, is quite interesting because you're allowing yourself, you know, this, this moment of um, freedom in a way, you know, because uh, it's always the idea that um, 46 is a daily journey, is a time, there are time constraints, date constraints, journey constraints, you know. Uh, so it's interesting that you are allowing yourself this, this sharing in a way that could yeah. continue the project, even if you find yourself living somewhere else for, you know, uh, we have only seen two chapters and it's been dramatic changes in yeah. the landscape of Hong Kong in those two years. So that is why I was actually thinking, I'm thinking, well, the, the work looks in, into history and in a way you have this kind of pattern of your father and this kind of repetitive uh, daily journey and suddenly you, you become the journey yourself and we are seeing extreme uh, changes in a way and um, due to the pandemic due to to the context of uh, of social policy and politics in hong kong so so that is why i was kind of interested to think well the the constraints and, and you know the um, the rigidity yeah. of delivering uh, the, the project going forward, which of course is a project that I'm very kind of looking forward to follow as well in terms of how it is constructing uh, history in real time in a way. It's the recording of history as it unfolds. Um, we can talk about these and your other wonderful projects for, for a long time. And sadly, we have lost uh, Kai Chung to our kind of shared conversation. It's part of technology hiccups. We will add his um, dialogue a little bit later. But I just wanted to kind of open and say if there was anything in particular, you as an artist and as having this exhibition that in in Sweden that you want to kind of uh, share in this discussion? Um, sorry, can you repeat the last one? Yes, I just wanted to kind of uh, ask you if there was anything in particular you wanted to kind of share with this idea of having the exhibition in these times, having the exhibition in uh, Sweden and, and, and then well having to see it from afar because sadly you are not able to be here due to the pandemic and um, and if it was any kind of a particular thought you know personal thought that you wanted to share with with us oh yeah when i was uh, no i can join this joint exhibition i was very uh, i hope to see the architecture and the space about the uh, lens corner places and uh, actually i want to Ah, oh, can I? Because I uh, the the work is mainly about the uh, snapshot of the people pass by. So I was uh, really want to know about the space there, and then I can do something to react for the to the locations. So, uh, but uh, sadly I cannot lie, But I was uh, looking around. I was really want to join this beautiful uh, 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 cities. Um, yeah. So I hope but we can see. <laughs> One day, I can really come visit Lanskunda. Yes. 
I mean, thank you very much. Um, it's been interesting to have this kind of discussion, you know, about your work. Of course, we have discussed your work at length before. We have discussed your work in, you know, in situ in Hong Kong, which has always been a massive privilege. And, and we will continue the conversation. Thank you very much. So we have been able to kind of establish connections with Chung, who is actually currently in lockdown in Beijing. So this is a very kind of transnational conversation we're having here. And, you know, it's part of mm -hmm. the technology and other issues that come up. But here he is. And, mm -hmm. and we kind of go back a, a little bit how we left it uh, in terms of the, the questions I was raising. To, um, I can't really sort of, uh, trying to kind of your response, your personal response, you know, as uh, creative this, of the events unfolding in Great Britain in relation to, to the revaluing of public sculptures in the public space. Um, mm. And how you kind of feel about, um, about that and what is your opinion about that? It's something that has really dominated very much our current discourse, public discourse in Great Britain. And I mean, sort of following your work and seeing your exhibitions and you have this symbolic Queen Victoria and this, uh, this repositioning of, um, of meaning throughout the 20th century. And I'm interested to you as a, as a creative, as an artist, how you kind of, um, what is your opinion on this unfolding event in, in the UK? Regarding to Monica's questions about uh, recently in UK, um, public statues in 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 public space has been top, uh, toppled, and it is related to protesters think um, those statues they are related to colonialism and also they are colonists who are um, merchants or owner of slaves. Um, and Monica asked me about my my reflection about um, this kind of actions and. How, how that contributed to the history of uh, historical narrative of public sculpture and monuments. Uh, in my own opinion, I think, um, because my last project is about public sculpture and also um, look into the perspective of uh, colonialism from uh, what is happening right now and we regard now Hong Kong is post-colonialism. But at the same time, I, I feel like we have to invent new terminology to describe this kind of new situation in Hong Kong because um, I, I can explain more later. But you know, in my opinion, from the perspective of an artist or from um, a perspective of a researcher, I look into um, the history of monuments as it is. In other words, I look into this kind of situation um, from phenomenological um, manner that how this uh, has been happened in what way and what is the background of um, those actions that protesters they're against um, the public monuments in, in, in UK and what is the sentiment behind it um, I if I situation my, uh, situate myself into the research this kind of research subject, I will regard that um, uh, how the whole process or how this piece of history has been documented, apart from the fact that like how those monuments they're built or the, uh, the structure of the monument and history and years, people, names, etc. But also about like what um, uh, what about the the sentiment, uh, the sentiment involved when the protesters um, took action to try to topple those um, those statues, and what what they really think about their actions and and how that is related to the general ideology of against colonialism, um, because for me, um, even though I'm not, um, I I do not research deeply into this issue, but at the same time, I feel like. Um, when UK people they grow um, out of a country that has been involved in colonialism for for centuries, and what they think about those statues or public monuments, 
because from my own perspective, um, uh, an artist who grow, um, who born, who was born in Hong Kong and also grew in Hong Kong, based in Hong Kong for um, th more than thirty years, and the culture of public monuments in Hong Kong or in in Asia and compared to Europe is completely different, because I believe uh, European they so get used to, to public monuments. And and those statues they bec bec um, become the background of the whole landscape of uh, of the city or of the country. So, um, but at the same time, I like the reason why I I I focus in the history and also how ideology um, derived from public mon monuments in Hong Kong, just because those monuments they lived with the with the time. In other words. Uh, the monument has been changed according to uh, uh, social events that are happening in Hong Kong uh, ever since um, late 19th century until now. So uh, I can raise one example that uh, apart from the fact that um, the Queen Victoria statute, uh, the statue I have been uh, researching in, in my last project, um, it is involved in um, June 4th massacre um, gathering every year. At the same time, um, <coughs> the statue is reinstalled in Queen Victoria Park right now, and um, there there are not a lot of public monuments related to colonial, uh, colonialists still existing in Hong Kong. Um, Queen Victoria is the like one of the most important one, um, but uh, like from my own observation, like uh, the government always covered or they, they host events in the park, they all, always covered the, Victor, um, the Queen Victoria statue. So um, for me, uh, I, I lived in, I have been living in mainland China for months and I observe uh, it would not happen in China or in other Europe, uh, Asian countries that uh, public monument, they, they simplify, uh, they, they, um, they represent a certain kind of sovereignty or uh, significance to the society and also to, to the history. Um, the local government will not do the same, but in Hong Kong, that is another story because um, the government is kind of against um, uh, colonialism, but at the same time, it will not express in, um, in cert, uh, normal circumstances. So um, for me, um, I observe and I always take a more like distance um, position to look into how history has been developed and what is the historical narrative involved and try to unfold the details um, in, in like every single event or in even sometimes I in interview um, participants in, in, um, in that um, situation or in in the events like for example when I conduct the research about um, the Queen Victoria statutes I I wanted to 3d scan the statue but um, I immediately contact um, government officers and ask them whether I can scan the statue but after a few back and forth conversation I, I was refu uh, rejected by the officer just because in 1996, a Chinese performing artist, Pan Xin Lu, he damaged Queen Victoria statue and splashed red paint onto it in order to express his um, artistic aim against colonialism before the handover of Hong Kong. So, um, like for me, of course, I have certain um, emotional attachment to to those statue, but at the same time. I take one step back and look into how the history is being generated and narrated and how I encounter this history with my own body and personal experience. So um, I, I was not allowed to approach or get close to the statue. So instead, I took a lot of pictures of um, the body parts of the queen and um, each body parts those parts they were lost during the war because the Japanese cut them off and make them uh, and melt the metal and make it into weapons and bullets. So um, 
I took um, hundreds of photos of each uh, of those body parts and then combined those uh, photographs into a 3D model and then I cast the 3D model in, in bronze. So um, you can see in the exhibition venue those um, body parts actually they com comprise of um, photographs from two-dimensional photographs to a three-dimensional um, bronze sculpture. So uh, for me um, the obstacle I encounter in the artistic creation process involved the background, um, uh, the background history of how um, the Queen statue encounter in the past, uh, how performing artists um, damaged the, the statue. But at the end, it caused a certain kind of uh, consequence to me and create an obstacle. But at the same time, I see the obstacle is like part of my part of my journey. So um, to, um, to respond to Monica's question, um, f I think like, um, of course we have personal judgment in terms of our, um, our preferences towards um, statues or um, public space or social movement. At the same time, I see, uh, sometimes I take a step back and being a researcher and, and see how these events or reaction, public reaction, they are being generated because of certain kind of ideology and also a gender and based on like the social change. So this is pretty much what I research and how I approach this kind of issues. So thank you very much, Sui Fong, for the conversation, sadly, we lost uh, the connection with Kai Chung um, a couple of times, but it's always challenges with this. And um, thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye. Thank you, Monica. Bye-bye.